Hey everybody, so today we are going to be talking about my top 15 characteristics that you should probably look into if you are shopping around for a digital asset management tool or a DAM, specifically if you are also heavily using taxonomies. So a big thank you to Marissa for inspiring this video. All right, and just keep in mind that all of these aspects are questions. If these things don't mean a lot to you and your business, then it's fine. You have to look at the list that I'm going to be presenting today from your perspective of your company and what your taxonomy actually needs. If you have a small taxonomy, some of these questions are not going to be relevant to you. If you have... Uh, no knowledge graph capabilities, there might be a few questions here that you don't need to worry about. Prioritize these questions based on your use case. All right, so with that, let's go get started. All right, so let's start with number one. Are you ready? Are you and your taxonomy ready for a digital asset management? This is maybe a no-brainer, but some folks will start into this assessment without really knowing what their taxonomy is. Their taxonomy maybe isn't healthy enough to really do a lot of damn work, or they just don't really know what they want their taxonomy to accomplish if they are shopping for a dam. So make sure you do your checklist on whether your taxonomy is ready for a dam. And if you don't have your own checklist and you are interested in hearing what my checklist is, make sure you leave a comment down below so I can make another video on that. All right, so number two is, do they actually have a taxonomy management component to the dam? And it's fine if they don't. And honestly, uh, between Marissa and I, we have not really seen a dam that has the full capacity of a taxonomy management tool that you would maybe get as a standalone tool. But, you know, a miracle could happen. So make sure you ask that question. Now, if they don't have a taxonomy management tool associated with the dam or built into the dam, you want to make sure that one, they can actually upload your taxonomy. Make sure you ask what format does it need to be in? What do they actually allow versus what they don't allow? Um, how hard is it to actually do that upload? Is it a file? Can you do it with APIs? All of those kind of connective uh, questions are probably good to ask at this stage because you need to get your taxonomy into this tool in order to be able to use it. Now, if they do have a taxonomy management tool within the dam, you wanna go through your checklist of what makes a good taxonomy management tool, which again, if you're interested in my take on that, leave a comment down below. I will also link a playlist of all of the taxonomy management tools that I have reviewed on this channel if you are interested in looking at that as well. All right, number three is, do they know what SCOS is and can they use it? And, you know, SCOS is by no means the only way that you can get vocabulary data into a dam, but I like to use SCOS the most for anything control vocabulary wise because it is the main standard for that kind of data. So it allows you to do interoperability. It usually helps with better ingestion, lower ETL, that sort of thing. But if they don't have SCOS and they maybe just allow CSV or something, you know, maybe a little lower down the tier of, of standardization, that's still fine. But just make sure that the components you do have in your taxonomy, refer back to number one that we discussed, is compatible. And that kind of dovetails into the next feature that you want to think about. And that is, how is the taxonomy actually applied within or adjacent to the dam. And I say adjacent to because if you're using uh, a taxonomy management tool that is outside of the dam and it does auto indexing, maybe you wanna make sure that that flow goes into the dam. That's another aspect that you wanna make sure that you understand. Is there automated tagging either in the tool or outside of the tool that you can utilize? A lot of dams have a lot of content and it would be great if all that content was tagged. Uh, but if it's not, or you have a large ingest of content, maybe, uh, you know, certain parts of the year, you have a lot of regulatory things that go in, or it's like your big event of the year, or your big new product is launched, whatever it is, you want to make sure that you can do auto tagging if it's important to you. And if it's not important to you, make sure you understand 
how easy is it to manually tag things? Because even if you're manually tagging things, you want some shortcuts like maybe type ahead or things like that that would make your life a little bit easier. And along the same vein as automated. So if this tool is automated for the taxonomy tagging, you wanna make sure that you understand the logic of how the tagging is done by the system and if you can update or tweak that logic because you might not agree with the way that the machine does it or you will perhaps find a common error that it makes. You need to be able to go in and update that. Along that same vein, you do wanna understand, is it rule-based logic for auto-indexing or is it more machine learning-based, which is like using training sets and you know a golden corpora uh, to train the machine on. I actually prefer the golden corpora method uh, just because it is more true to form. It's going to really understand the linguistics and, and the composition of your content in order to do the auto indexing. But I also know in dams, you don't always have content that is eligible or, or well-structured enough to do that kind of auto indexing. So if you are using rule-based systems, just be very aware, you have to write all of those rules. And then you have to maintain them and you have to have people to do that. For instance, I know a very, very well-known uh, news and report company that took them five years to set something like this up. So it was almost like as soon as they got the system up and running, they had to start retraining it again. So just be aware of what you're in for while you get into this. And All right. And number five is how is the taxonomy actually used in the dam? This is a big one. So is it only used for the search engine to find new assets? Is it uh, used for browse? Is there any way that you can start to do some suggestions? For instance, hey, others in your department commonly also search for these things when they search on that topic. So some of those things might be helpful for you. And can you customize them? Because maybe they do have maybe recommendations and other things, but if they're built off of just the most common searches and you don't know that their search engine will build that logic out from all the searches from across all the different departments. If you don't know that, you could say, oh great, it does suggested searches, that's amazing. But a recommended search for your department versus let's say the accounting department are gonna be very different. So you wanna make sure that you understand how that stuff is working and ask if it can be calibrated to your specifications. The next is near and dear to my heart because it's a big part of my day job and a lot of what I talk about on this channel. And that is, does the dam support query expansion or even knowledge graph behind the scenes or even from a browsability perspective because you can use knowledge graph structure for browsability. The reason I say this is that query expansion is very important if you are trying to tie together many different taxonomies across different departments because a knowledge graph will allow you to do that. Here is a video up top if you wanna to see how I suggest you actually map those things together. The other thing is, even if you don't have multiple vocabularies, having a knowledge graph or at the very least a query expansion, which is more of like a lookup table, like an if then, if they type this, then it might mean that kind of thing. That's really helpful for incorporating your user's natural language into the search engine so that if they don't know the correct taxonomy term, they will still be able to find the information or maybe they know a legacy term for it. Those kinds of things are really helpful to have in query expansion. And if you are not ready for a knowledge graph, but you might wanna say, well, you know, I wanna keep it in my options for the future, just make sure you are including those UIDs in the actual tags on your assets so that you can then uh, open up the capability of Knowledge Graph some other day if you wish. Next up is, does the dam have inbound and outbound APIs? So the reason this would be important perhaps for you is if it doesn't have a taxonomy management tool or if it doesn't have an auto indexer or if it doesn't have you know some kind of auto ETL if that's something that you need, you wanna be able to connect those systems in. And perhaps if you are trying to tie this back to some kind of auditing system or some kind of BI intelligence or a uh, knowledge management system of some sort that's outside of the dam, 
that's where you would want some of those outbound APIs as well. So you can get some of the data from the dam out to other systems if that's something that you need. Next, if a label changes for one of your taxonomy terms, how difficult is it for the dam to make that change? Do you have to completely re-index every single asset? That's a lot of money and that's a lot of time. And that could be a real blocker for you. If you have maybe an outdated term that is maybe even offensive and you need to update those things, making sure you understand the level of effort on changing a label is, is really important. If you're using those UIDs that are kind of like the hidden factor behind that label, then you're probably good. But if that's not how the system works, you still, regardless, you still need to make sure that you understand how those updates happen. Next is who manages the taxonomy? Uh, in a lot of dams, it's kind of like open so that you can have lots of different stakeholders adding in taxonomy pages or taxonomy assets. You can update this with roles. So if you have a role in your dam as taxonomist or something along those lines, maybe those are the only people that can make updates. But you do want to make sure that you understand not just, yes, we have roles. Yeah. But what does that actually mean? I hear a lot of people say, oh, yeah, we have all the good stuff like roles and security. Give me some detail on that, because some taxonomies, especially for corporate, it can be a, a, akin to corporate espionage if you don't really understand the security of who can go in and look at your taxonomy and your search logs and some of the other things in the dam. So make sure that you understand not just who updates the taxonomy, but the roles, responsibilities and security aspects of this as well. Yet another role that you might have in your dam is data governance or data governance officer. This is something that you want to check into if it's important to your business. So if you are doing anything that is regulatory or something with food or um, cosmetics or something that uh, could involve somebody's health, those are things that you really want to make sure that you, if you have rules around, that they can be honored by that dam. So make sure that you have that one that I'm really uh, in favor of that's pretty simple to, to have in a dam is uh, the clock, right? So the update clock is what I, I call that. But it's basically, you know, if you have a retention plan or you need to make sure that you go back and make just qualify, yes, this is correct still and accurate, um, maybe you have to do that on each taxonomy term or, you know, certain indexing on very important documents so that you know they get found. Those kind of things um, are, are pretty basic and data governance can get way more complicated than that. So if you do have a lot of those rules or you're thinking about doing those, make sure your dam can handle it. All right. So this next one kind of ties back to that API question a little bit, but does the dam allow you to add tags to all types of content? So some dams will only allow you to add tags to textual kinds of content or maybe the metadata that associates with a piece of content. This is something that if you have videos or presentations or you know data sets even, if you need to be able to add tags to those, um, even outside of the metadata perhaps, uh, maybe some hidden fields uh, are, are an option, but making sure that that dam can handle all the different types of assets you have and also understanding the level of, of the tag. So for instance, um, a Word document is just one document, but what if you have uh, a book that has book chapters and, and maybe even sections of that book? If those are important to you, um, if you have manuals or some kind of um, maintenance service uh, kind of things, you need to make sure that those giant documents have different sections or different chapters in them and that your dam can help you zero in on those different assets because it's the worst thing giving a dam over to your, your end user. They find that one document they need, but that document is a thousand pages long. They don't know what they're looking for. It's gonna take them forever. So do yourself and your users a favor and make sure you ask this question. Because well, maybe it doesn't do those things. There are other tools that you can get to tag videos or segments of a video or segments of a book. So if the dam does not do these things, it's not a make or break moment. It's something that you will just have to make sure that it has those, those ways of uh, doing the API callbacks or some other mechanism to get that data into the system. The next is, does it support a data fabric? But if you are trying to tie together multiple tables from multiple databases, being able to use a data fabric or some kind of data 
connective system that they might have. So making sure that they can handle all of that with something like a data fabric, whether they call it that or not, isn't the point. Just making sure that they can tie those things together in an effective way. Knowledge Graph is a good way to do this, but I also understand that not all dams will have that Knowledge Graph capability at the document table or database level. So it's good to just ask that question. Next is which languages do they cover? Unfortunately, a lot of dams that I'm I'm familiar with don't cover a really wide range of, of languages. And maybe that's not really important to your business if you don't have you know, a global workforce or a lot of people at your company that maybe speak other languages, but that is more and more common. That is a good thing. So just make sure that you ask that question and ask which languages and maybe even which dialects if they go that deep, because that would be really helpful for your end users. And not just for your end users, but your content too. Your content might not be in only one language. So making sure that the dam can not only have tags for those languages, can do searching at those languages, parsing of the queries, um, making sure that it can read the documents in those other languages, and your taxonomy if it's in multiple languages. All of those things have to be a part of this which languages do you cover question. Taxonomies, they're not always in a hierarchy and that's unfortunate, but very common. So if you have a list of companies or a list of people or a list of parts, those don't always re resonate well in, in a hierarchy, unfortunately. So maybe you have a lot of flat lists or maybe you have a poly hierarchy where there's more than one broader term or child term for anything. All of those things are totally legit from your taxonomy's perspective, but you have to make sure that DAM is going to be able to understand those things if it's important to your business. And last but not least is how big is too big? You will notice I ask this question all the time in any of my honest review series where I'm reviewing tools. And the reason for this is when you're talking about data, it can get really, really big. And you know, even if you don't have a large asset pool, your taxonomy might actually be very large. And very large will be dependent on, do they mean flat list or hierarchy? Because think about it from this perspective. If they, if the dam has to paint a browse taxonomy on the page, but your taxonomy is, you know, let's say 10,000 terms long, it won't be able to render that effectively. And so you might end up getting charged more for that functionality and you just didn't realize it because you didn't ask this question ahead of time. And previous to the last point, if you have a flat list, those usually are a lot harder to render if they're a very large list and they might not be easily uh, browsed if they're a flat list. So that's something else from a user's standpoint that you're gonna have to think about. So always ask the question, how many taxonomy terms can this thing handle? Is it only in a hierarchy or what if it's a flat list? Ask these questions because I have learned the hard way in my own experience, if you don't ask this question, you can be in a world of hurt later on. All right, so I hope that list has helped you with some questions that you might wanna ask if you are searching for a dam and you are a heavy taxonomy user. All right, so with that, I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.